My name is Matthew Walls, and before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which I'm recording this presentation, and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians. Today I'll be discussing the ways in which ideas about gender are generated in texts, and it's my aim to demonstrate that although popular media has come some way toward redressing the imbalances in how women and men are portrayed, there's still significant room for improvement. To begin with, I'd like to go back to the 1940s. In particular, I'm going to talk about Mandrake the Magician, one of the first superhero comics predating Superman by around four years. It's been in print since 1934, and so demonstrates some of the ways that our attitudes and perceptions have changed over time with regard to the psychological and behavioural traits which are considered particularly appropriate to bodies classified as male, and those considered appropriate to bodies classified as female. The specific example I'll be using is the story of Mandrake's visit to Amos Island, which first ran from October 6th to December 22nd in 1940. On this island, Mandrake encounters men engaged in what the comic refers to as the traditional tasks of women. The fact that the very idea of men cooking and cleaning is regarded as a strange sight tells us a lot about the expectations and prejudices of audiences at the time. Before long, the Amazons, for whom the island is named, arrive. Completing the reversal of expected gender roles, the women are the warriors and the ruling class, but the author is quick to show us how he feels about women in position of authority as the Amazon Queen immediately allows her emotions to get the better of her and gets into a fight with her sister over Mandrake. And it's up to Mandrake, possessing as he does the psychological characteristic of rationality which is claimed to attach to normal masculinity, to end the dispute. Unfortunately, Mandrake is still a prisoner. His first escape plan is simply to restore the natural order by putting the men in charge. The women take to their new roles without complaint, but unfortunately the rule of women has utterly ruined the men and they just can't handle it. So with the women back in charge, Mandrake has to try something new. His new plan relies on the Queen's womanly vanity, and this time it succeeds and he's able to resume his travels. But the dichotomy between male is rational and capable of universally valid thought, and female is emotional and tethered to the particularity of her body and situation, is one that's still evident in patterns of thought today, and with my next example I hope to show this. For those not familiar, the television program Homeland is a political thriller about a female CIA officer played by Claire Danes. I haven't seen the show, but I have seen a video about the show called Five Reasons Homeland is the Most Sexist Show on TV, and it makes some very good points which I'd like to share with you. Although society's views on women may have changed to the extent that Dane's character is able to hold a position of responsibility in a traditionally male-dominated career, and save the day and gain the respect of all her male colleagues, the way she achieves her goals differs markedly from how males are shown to behave. While the equally experienced male CIA officers work through a logical, rational process, Danes' character often leaps to conclusions by means of a mystical female intuition and is prone to hysteria. This reduction of women to a feminine body deemed inferior harkens back to the idea of women operating on emotion and feeling and makes it clear that women are just not suited to the same roles as men. They simply lack the required level of detachment and rationality. This is not necessarily typical of all modern media, however. The video games Mirror's Edge and Hydrophobia both feature female protagonists who play roles that would traditionally have been performed by men, including athletic feats and both armed and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Both games also feature male characters in support roles, providing the protagonists with information and situational updates from a secure location. This contrasts with the more traditional roles in games like Batman Arkham Asylum, with a male protagonist and female character in the support role, an almost exact reversal of the roles in Mirror's Edge and Hydrophobia. Our interactions with texts are crucial in our self-production as gendered subjects, and in recent times we are starting to see texts which provide a greater range of possibilities for what it means to be male or female, but as the examples of Batman and Homeland show, they still stand in contrast to the prevailing gender roles which remain to some degree consistent with those of the 1940s. 